Lecture number one, power factor, apparent power, and active power. The U.S. power line receptacle is shown in the following figure. It is intended for two-prong or three-prong power plugs. There are three wires connected to the receptacle. The first is the black live wire, which has a full 120 volts AC relative to earth ground, which is dangerous for the human body. The second is the white neutral wire, which normally does not have a dangerous voltage relative to earth ground, but it is still not safe. Under certain abnormal conditions, like wire discontinuity, it may have a dangerous voltage relative to earth ground. The third is the green ground wire, which is a safety wire at near zero voltage relative to earth ground. Unlike the neutral wire, it normally does not carry any current. The nominal line voltage is 120 volts RMS, and the nominal frequency is 60 Hz. The period of the AC voltage or current is the time interval between the adjacent tops of the waveform, as shown in the picture. The period is also applicable to any periodic process. The frequency of the sinusoidal voltage or current is simply a number of full periods per second. The frequency is also applicable to any periodic process. Frequency is the reciprocal of the period, and one can be found from the other. The angular frequency, noted as omega, is the phase angle change speed. Unlike frequency, it is a sine wave specific parameter, not applicable to non-sinusoidal waveforms. It can be determined from the frequency and vice versa through a factor of 2 pi. A sinusoidal voltage or current waveform is given by the formula V of t equals amplitude times sine omega t, where omega is the line voltage or angular frequency. The amplitude or peak value is applicable both to voltage and current. It is the maximum or peak positive value of the voltage or current waveform, which is sinusoidal in the power line. The units are volts or amperes. The peak-to-peak -peak value is the maximum distance between the negative and positive peaks of the voltage or current waveform. For the sine wave, it is the amplitude doubled. The units are volts or amperes respectively. The RMS or root mean square value, by definition, is the equivalent DC voltage or current value, delivering the same power to a resistive load as the actual AC voltage or current. The RMS voltage or current is found by averaging the squared waveform over the period and taking the square root. For pure sinusoidal waveforms, it is equal to the amplitude divided by the square root of 2. Regular multimeters measure just the RMS values. The units are volts or amperes respectively. Another rather rarely used term is average AC voltage or current. Formally speaking, averaging the voltage or current over the period returns zero. However, by informal definition, it is the absolute value of the AC voltage or current waveform averaged over the period. For a sine wave, it is 2 over pi of the amplitude. The units are volts or amperes respectively. Apparent power is simply the product of RMS voltage and RMS current. If we measure the voltage in the receptacle with the multimeter and then measure the current in the power cord, we get two RMS values. If we simply multiply them, we get the apparent power. However, it is not a real power, which produces energy like that in the DC circuit. Only a part of the apparent power produces real energy. The unit for apparent power is volt amp, which is not the same as watt. Active power is the amount of energy delivered to the load per second. It may significantly differ from the apparent power, but always no higher in value. It is an energy-related value. The active power cannot be figured out from two separate values of the voltage and current. It can be determined 
Only if the voltage and current are measured simultaneously in real time, like a power analyzer does. However, the real power can be easily determined by circuit simulation tools. The unit for active power is watt, and the definition is shown below. Power factor is one of the most important AC power characteristics. You can find in many different sources that power factor is a cosine of the phase shift angle between voltage and current. However, it is only true for linear circuits, for example, circuits containing only resistors, capacitors, and inductors. However, if the circuit contains semiconductor components like diodes or transistors, the above equation becomes invalid. Furthermore, even the terms reactive power or complex voltage or current values become not applicable because the waveforms are not sinusoidal anymore. However, the fundamental definition for power factor is true for any periodic waveforms, regardless of their shapes. It is defined as the ratio of active power to apparent power, as shown below. It is equal to the cosine of the phase shift angle for linear circuits, but not equal to the cosine of the phase shift angle for rectifiers. The units are non-dimensional. The crest factor of voltage, or, more frequently, current, is its peak to RMS ratio. It is not as frequently used as other AC-related characteristics, and it is also a non-dimensional value. For the American Standard Power Line, the RMS voltage is 120 volts, and the frequency is 60 Hz. For non-resistive loads, such as a rectifier, the waveform of the current is not obvious, but can be determined using simulation tools. For sinusoidal waveforms, the RMS voltage and amplitude are related through square root of 2. The angular frequency and frequency are related through 2 pi, and the period is the reciprocal of the frequency. For sine wave voltages and currents, the parameter relationship table is shown below. To convert between two parameters, pick the row with the known value, for example, RMS. Pick the column with the desired value, for example, peak. Find the multiplier in the cell, in this example, square root of 2. Multiply the known value by the multiplier and get the desired value. Thank you for watching. The next lecture is devoted to power line rectifiers. Please email us or comment with any questions.